Uh, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls, welcome to the webinar. We're going to go ahead and begin here in about 30 seconds or so. I just need to jump on and do a quick sound check and a quick video check to make sure that you can see our screen here and to make sure that you can uh, hear us. If you can see the screen, uh, you'd be viewing Adam's uh, website right now within the Safari window or Firefox. And hey, John, so if you can see that and you can hear me and you could type into the questions box, that would be great. And uh, we'll get Adam going here in just a second. So far, I've got John says we're good to go, and Jack, Joe, and Ronald all set as well. <coughs> oh, there we are, a couple more people. Hey, Kathy. Kathy from Texas. I see you is probably the best one so far. I see you. <laughs> Jason's all set. Brendan Murray. Okay, perfect. All right, it looks like we've made our connection, ladies and gentlemen. So we'll go ahead and begin here. Hey, Gary. <coughs> uh, what we're going to be going over today is basically Adam's thought process on how he edits his portrait images uh, using Silver Effects Pro 2 specifically. We're going to take a look at uh, a couple raw images. We've got some cool stuff as far as uh, basically completely transforming an image, creating some really cool effects. And uh, if you have any questions at all, feel free to type them into the questions box there. The demonstration should be about eh, 45 minutes or so. Hi, Mary. Glad you made it. And uh, yeah, again, type in any questions. It should be pretty laid back here. Go ahead, Adam. <laughs> Take it away, man. All right, all right. How's it going, guys? Um, so, yeah, let's get started here. Basically, uh, do I need to do it? Do it. Yeah. All right, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I shoot a lot of music and band stuff on tour. And I asked last time what people wanted to see more of, and that was how to edit my portraits. So, that's what I'm going to show you guys. And we are doing two of the images we did last time, but I'll try to, you know, cover a little different area on them so you can still get something new out of it. And in addition, we'll be doing some more images as well. So, um, yeah. Close this up here. And this is the first image we're going to start off with. And it looks really good, and that's because it's actually already edited. So let's go ahead and uh, just show you. That's a before, and this is after. And this is a shot of Mike Posner. And it was taken in the, somewhere on the East Coast, uh, and it was in a parking lot because we were right outside of a venue. So really quick, quick shoot for a magazine. And the original edit is all color, but I really like this image in black and white. So I'm going to show you guys how we did this. And let's open this up. I'm going to go ahead and open this up in Silver Effects. And this was opened as a, this was made as a smart object. And when you use smart objects in Photoshop, uh, you can actually go back and adjust your Silver Effects uh, filter after you've already done it. So you're not really set in stone even uh, even if you press OK down here. And yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of everything I've done to this image. Is there a quick way to reset this? Let's yeah. forget. You want to reset everything? Yeah. I actually click on Neutral in the upper left-hand corner on this preset. All right, and cool. then delete your control points. I'm always learning as well how to use this program even more and more. But um, yeah, I'm going to delete all my control points here. And I use a lot of them. If I could get them selected. <laughs> there we go. All right, perfect. OK, so now we're, now we're at the original image here. And um, so it's important when you're editing a editing even if you're going to edit it in black and white to open your image in color in Photoshop because Silver Effects Pro uses the color data to get their channels and get their I mean it's how it uses how how it gets the filter uh, data so yeah basically uh, what I like to start out with is uh, overall adjustments of the image so nothing specific like eyes and mouths just uh, brightening up the image darkening it and just giving myself a good palette to uh, start with so, or good canvas, rather. So, what I'm going to start doing is placing control points on the image. And I'm going to try to make this look... I want to get rid of this fence, and I want to make make it look more like there's sh ugh, there's sun shining through uh, from behind the guy. And uh, give it more of like an angelic kind of feel. So, place control points, and right in within the control point, you have all the controls you have over on the right here. Or most of them, rather. And I'm just going to up the brightness on this and make it a little bit bigger. 
and something that took me a little while to grasp and uh, if you used Photoshop before uh, might take you a sec too but basically the control points show a circle but they're not affecting everything in that circle they're uh, taking the data from where the point is placed and seamlessly blending it with the rest of the image so yeah here we go and right now I'm just duplicating each control point by uh, holding down option on a Mac alt on a PC and dragging it around the screen here and this this would take a while in Photoshop because you'd have to mask everything and you know separate and paint where you want it to go but that's the thing I like about Silver Effects is you can just really place points, drag them, uh, move them around to see how it'll look anywhere obviously I'm not going to put this on his face but you know you can just drag this around and see oh that looks cool I'll, I'll keep it there but I'm just adding light in areas where light would shine through and I'm also using hotkeys to add these control points so I'm just, saying, just hitting shift command A and that's just a little quick shortcut so I don't have to keep going back and pressing add control point Adam how do you decide where to put the control points and then what to do to them? Um, that's a good question well I put the control points in I'm not quite I almost like play it by eye so I put them down and I say oh that looks cool and if it doesn't then I do exactly what I showed and just drag it around but for these first ones I'm putting them on the background and then just making it brighter and then if it's too much I'm bringing it down as far as the area it's affecting and if it's too little I'm bringing it up and almost just play it by eye mm -hmm. does that, does mm -hmm. that answer your question Dan? Sure. Alright cool, perfect and good and I always go back here and just turn the control points on and off oh, there's check marks next to everything so I can just turn that on and then off well, off slow. and then on slow it down okay so that's off and that's what it looked like before and now this is what it looks like after should I start answering these questions okay cool and um, you can see it brighten the whole image and it's getting a little bit too much on his face so now we're gonna go in and add the selective adjustments so I'm gonna go in and place one on his face right there and you can already see you know that looks a little bit off so we got a little bit of work to do here but uh... no worries it'll work out so I'm gonna brighten up his face a little bit but not quite as much because I still want him to still look, look human not like he's a glowing glowing alien so there we go add another one down here Awesome. And I'm just eyeing this, uh, looking at what needs to be a little bit brighter. And I'm trying to make sure that we don't get this awkward edge on the corner right here. So that's what I'm working with right now. And perfect. Brightening. Good. Just placing points and making it brighter. And I actually don't like that right there. Let's see if we can get rid of it. So I was making that a little bit too bright, it looked like, down there without a... Let's find a little bit of a in-between. There we go. That looks good. Cool. Now, now, why did you do that, though? Because I was getting this... Basically, what's happening is I was forcing the image to get a little bit too bright. Mm -hmm. You can see that when I bring it all the way up, we have this dark edge right here. And sometimes you just can't push the image. All it doesn't look photographic. Yeah, it doesn't. It just looks a little awkward. So I'm bringing it down until we can almost match the background to his chin and still make it look, you know, believable. You know, we want to Photoshop the image so it looks cool, but we don't want somebody to look at it and go, hey, that's really Photoshopped. It doesn't look like a photo anymore. Uh, we want him to just be like, hey, that's a really good photo. And let's... All right, there we go. Perfect. And then I'm going to brighten up his neck a little bit. Good. Hair a little bit more. And I think that looks good. Let's see, a little before and after. So this is our before, this is our after. And I think it's a little bit too bright, actually, on his face here. You can see we're losing his skin. And we want to keep the texture there. We want it to be brighter, but we don't want it to be so bright that you can't see his pores and things like that. And 
just to let you know, I did clean up his face and a little bit of editing in raw editor as far as spot editing goes before opening this in Photoshop um, so that, you know, we had a clean, clean face to work with. And there was actually a groomer there all day who made his hair look perfect, perfect like this. So no Photoshop there. All right, so after we have the image um, set out into this nice, clean, clean slate, now I'm going to go ahead and start adding some of that popping effect to it. So our friend's going to be this structure right over here. And if you adjust it right here, it's going to affect the whole image. So structure all the way up, structure all the way down. And neither of those are exactly what we're going for. So we're going to have to place a few more control points or use the ones we're already working with. And I usually place the structure control points in important spots. So what I can do is add a control point on his lips bring the brightness up a tiny bit and then grab the structure slider right here bring that up as well and you can see that's just defining everything right there a little bit more and just making it pop a little bit go ahead and add another one on his hair Do the same thing you want to remember to match the brightness so it's equal to the ones around it because when you add the control point it sets it to the default settings and the brightness was a little bit less than the rest of the image and these these points again are just this is affecting his hair so you can see how his hair is just popping out you can see it more and uh, these are things I want people to focus on because uh, yeah they're important parts of his face eyes eyes for sure and you don't want to do too much you just want to find the right spot so it still looks good Not right there. Perfect. Something around there. And to do all this in Photoshop, again, would take a lot longer. It's a lot easier to do in Silver Effects. Um, and I like clicking around and just being able to look and drag and just, I'm a very visual person. I don't know a lot of the math behind, of all, behind all this, but I don't really need to know it because I know it works. And so dragging and dropping points is like the best thing ever. <laughs> I like it. Cool. All right, perfect. All right, I'm going to show you guys a little before and after here again so you can see what we're working with. And that's the before and that's the after. And you could say, sorry, that's the before, and you can see it's a lot darker. Uh, you can still see that car in the background here, which is not very fun. And uh, now that we've brightened it up, it almost looks like it's more maybe shot through a window or there's, it's not a parking lot setting. I'd probably go back into Photoshop and get rid of this altogether, but uh, it just looks like there's a nice solid background to them. And I like that look. It looks, looks nice. I'm going to add some overall adjustments to this image as well. I uh, love the so soft contrast. It's probably my favorite slider, but I don't exactly understand what it does, but it makes the image look awesome. So I'm just going to do that a little bit, and it just sort of softens everything up. Uh, I'll show you before and after here. So this is before, and now this is the after. Made it a little bit darker over here, a little bit brighter up here, and I just like the look. This brightness again is, I think it's a little bit too much. Bring that down a little bit. Perfect. And then I'm gonna add some overall contrast. That's too much. Actually, maybe not too much of that. Something like that. I think I need to add another point right here because this is a little bit too dark. Perfect. Something like that. Uh, maybe that's too, a little bit too bright still. Good. All right, cool. There we go. And now within each one of these drop down menus, there's a whole bunch more options. So we have color filter, which I actually discovered I like a lot last time. I believe this is the one. Yeah. So this is where it uses the color color data of your image even though you can't actually see it. And I believe this image was click through these. I can't remember which one you used last time. But because this image was so blue, it looked very cool. And this is one of those ones that Dan would actually know the math behind a little bit better than me. I'm almost clicking and dragging, but Dan, which one can we use to get that? rounded effect that we used last time. I think it was the blue filter? Yeah. So so what the color filter is doing is it actually reacts like a glass color filter would if you shot black and white film. 
So if you click on the red color filter, things like his skin, anything that's red is going to lighten up. And anything on the opposite end of the color spectrum, it darkens back down. So if you click on red, the red stuff lightens up. The stuff in the background that was blue darkens down. But if you click on blue, his skin tone darkens down and the rest of it sort of lightens up. Uh, now, if you click on these color filters, it kind of gives you traditional kinds of color filters. But then you can click on your hue slider and you can actually drag this. So you can kind of fine tune and tweak it to get exactly what you're going for. So I don't know exactly what, what Adam was going for, <laughs> but you can slide your hue slider around to get it. <laughs> awesome. Thank maybe you. Maybe the strength as well. All right, scientist Dan, we're good. <laughs> and yeah, so I like to play around with this, and like Dan said, it's like a glass filter on your camera. <laughs> but that might be a little bit too much. Let's see if this does. Yeah, it's not doing too much for me this time, but these are cool to play around with and just they look different on every photo. Again, just click around, uh, eventually you'll find something you like, and when you do find something you like, uh, make sure you save it. So you can save, uh, these are presets that come with the program over here on the left. Um, so you have neutral, underexposed, overexposed, and those are good to give you like a ballpark range, um, maybe not stick to them, but you can also add your own. So add preset, that can be like, you know, and just press OK. And then now every time I come back, if I want to edit an image similar, I can always just choose that um, that preset, and it should be under Custom. Dan has a bunch here. But uh, yeah, Nick Software. It should be in there somewhere. There we go. But um, I'm also going to do some finishing adjustments. I like to add um, a little bit of color to, to these images. And uh, you know, like a little bit of a tint. Oh, that's your finishing adjustments. And um, so, where are we? here we go. Under toning, uh, you can add like a slight tint, because I like to shoot black and white a lot, but sometimes I feel like, you know, adding a slight silver or more of a golden uh, cast to the image really helps. And, and so, so what I'm going to do is go ahead here and just, you have all these choices, and you could just sort of scroll through and find what works best. And for this image, I liked the blue that we started off with, but now that we add all the brightness, I think more of a yellow or a golden. That's too gold. Something more around here. Looks a little bit nicer. And just adjust the strength, and that's too much. But it just gives it a little bit extra of a finishing, well, a finishing adjustment, exactly what it says. And I like it to the point where you almost can't tell it's there, but it's still something. Let's see. Before and after. There we go. So you can see it. I mean, it's black and white beforehand, or that has silver on it, it looks like. So. And then afterwards, you know, it's just nice yellow. Little gives a little more of a flat look, but I like it a lot. And yeah. So I'm not sure how close we got to the other edit. It's hard to it's hard to do them exactly the same every time, and that's why these presets on the left are great. But let's see here. So that was last time. That was this time. Similar. It looks like we had more contrast and noise last time. We can add that too. So within them, there's also all these film effects you can add. And especially for this, let's see here. Nothing too intense. It's too much noise. Something around... Yeah, let's do that. Just a little bit of noise. Uh, something to mix it up a little bit. And just help break it up, give it more of a film look. There we go. Perfect. Cool. And then if I was going to spend more time in this image, uh, I might go back in and fine fine tune some more things, you know, add some more sharpness in areas, uh, play around with it more. And what I would do is just add more control points uh, and keep playing around with it. Uh, until I get something I like. And again, you can always save your presets. The control points don't save because those are this different on every image. So, uh, yeah, just know that you won't get this elaborate setup every time you reuse the preset. Cool. All right. And that'll do it for that image. And, 
yeah, it was a it was a it was a smart object. So I can always go back in now if I want to change something. I just double click on Silver FX Pro 2 here, and uh, can always go back in and change things. And if you guys have any questions on anything, uh, there's a question box there. Just write them down, and at the end of the seminar, uh, we'll get back to those and we'll answer them all for you. So uh, just sit tight, but we will answer everything. Okay. And next image. All right, so this next image, uh, again, we're starting with a colored image. I'm just going to show you uh, everything from Photoshop Raw now where I do the image as well. But this is of Mike Hironica. He's a singer of one of the bands I work with. Cool dude, lots of tattoos, uh, very photogenic, and I love photographing him just because you could do so much with the photos, and he looks good in most of them, so it makes my life a little bit easier. But... um. Photoshop adds an auto sharpen to everything, and I just like to bring that down because we're going to sharpen the heck out of this image. So I just want to make sure, uh, make sure it's not sharp already. And then in addition to that, I also like to bring those blacks down a little bit because there's some information down here I'm going to want to rescue. And if I leave the blacks up at where it started, it's almost too dark to work with. So I'm going to bring it down uh, a little bit lower. And the color, I don't need to change that because we're going to have a black and white image. So just need to adjust this exposure a little bit brighter. And recover a little bit. Perfect. All right, nothing too crazy here. And then once we're good here, we're going to open this as a smart object. You have to actually click on it down there because my computer is set up differently. Oh, there you are. Shift. Oh, wonderful. Got it. Perfect. So we're going to open it as a smart object, and to do, to do that on this computer, we hold down Shift, and you just press Open Object. Awesome. So this image has a little bit more that we can do to it, because it has more to it. There's tattoos, there's the vest, uh, he's got glasses, he's got hair. Uh, he has a bunch of different areas we can work with. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go Filter, Nix Software. Silver effects. And same kind of deal as last time, but uh, this time we're not going to go for the same effect. So first step is to get yourself a nice clean slate to work on. And uh, when I say clean slate, I mean try to even stuff out. So maybe along the bottom here, make this a little bit brighter. Uh, other things I might do are add some fill light over here on his right, our left side of his face. Um, maybe this side's a little bit too bright, and I want to bring it down a little bit. Uh, just go ahead and even it out so that when we go in and make the other adjustments, we don't have to rescue anything. You know, we're working with good stuff. So again, we're just going to start by adding some control points. Let's go ahead down here. Let's bring that brightness up a little bit. Oh, too much. Perfect. I'm going to duplicate that one. Cool. And those might be a little bit bright, but what I'm going to do here is all these are affecting a similar area down here. Uh, it's the bottom bottom half of the image. So I'm actually going to group these together. So I just click and drag uh, to select them all. You can see they're all selected right now. Then I'm going to go to my selective adjustments. And I'm just going to group them. The icon's right here. Looks like a little gadget, or Steam icon. And uh, yeah, select that. And now when I move this one, it'll affect all of them. So I'm just going to make the brightness something like right there. See how that looks. Yeah, she's a tad brighter. And then I think right here needs a little bit too. And the um, thing with control points is if I put this one right here and don't place one on his arm, what it's going to do is it's going to affect the arm a little bit. Um, not a lot, but just a little bit. So what I make sure I do is when I'm working on edges like this, I always put a control point on each side. So I'll add one over here too. And then that'll control his arm. So there we go. And same thing goes for the background. So let's say we're going to brighten up right here a little bit. And you can see that sort of creeping onto his neck, onto the background, and other things as well. So we're going to make it smaller first, so it just affects the area you want it to. And then I'm going to add one on the background as well, so it darkens that back down. Because I don't want there to be a little halo surrounding him of brightness or anything like that. So just trying to uh, make sure I place control points everywhere that are needed. And good, got that a little brighter. Let's brighten up the side of his face a tiny bit. Whoops. There we go. Perfect. 
And I like to zoom out uh, just to give myself a little visual check. Uh, quick press compare, go a little before, after, see if there's more areas I need to improve or if maybe I improve something a little bit too much. Uh, I might go back on it. And I think that this might be a little bit too bright. So let's see if we can... There we go. So it was white and didn't have a lot of data in it. It has now a little bit more gray, gray tone to it. Perfect. Same goes for a shirt. And that should do it. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so now that we have a nice image set, uh, we're going to go in and add structure and do a lot of points that will make the image pop. Uh, we've got some fun errors to work with, like tattoos. And yeah, it'll be good. So structure. I, I like to use it a lot uh, for making a lot of the bold lines thicker. So think like uh, think like his sweater vest, or not sweater vest, jean jacket, rather, here. There's a lot of room to make this a lot more intense. And you can pretty much see that, uh, just how much more bold that made it. And that might be a too much, but I think I'm just going to leave it here for now. You know, I'm just going to add a bunch of 100% control points everywhere on this gene thing, so I can see exactly where it's adjusting. And what's the is there a hockey that shows like the red area? That is that on the app? Is in the app. Ah, just you kinda... can see the selection over here though. Okay, yeah, that's what I was looking for. So let me just add a few more points on this jacket. Good, and I'm going to group these together again. How are you doing that? Oh, right now I'm shift clicking on each point to group them together. And uh, have them all selected, grouping them. And then I'm going to show you exactly where they're um, affecting. So I'm going to click this right here. And everything that's white right now is being affected uh, by these control points that are in this group. So uh, you can see it's most strong on his jean jacket, and then it's sort of fading everywhere else. And the reason I'm doing this at such a high level and everything is so I can see exactly where it's fading to uh, and exactly where else I need to put control points. So I'm going to place some all over here, all over here, and on his tattoos as well. And I'm going to bring actually bring this down so it's not as strong anymore. And uh, get rid of this. Turn it off. There we go. And so, yeah, that's so what I had it at. Bring it down a little bit more. Perfect. And then I'm going to go ahead and add those control points around in areas that I want to also control on my own. How are you doing that so fast? I'm um, pressing Shift Command A and then clicking. And then using my clicker to go as fast as I can. <laughs> and good. So now I'm going to use groups again. And next I'm going to work with his tattoos. So I'm going to Shift click all these. And I could probably Shift drag click those ones. Perfect. And there we go. I'm going to group those together. And now with those control points, I'm going to adjust the structure. That's the wrong one. Grab that big one. Uh, there we go. Got to find. So the big one's going to be like your master control point for the whole group. Uh, this one with the circle around it. You can see all these ones are a donut hole, and this is the donut. So yeah, grab the donut. And uh, I'm just going to increase the structure on there. And you can see now that it's making his tattoos look awesome. Uh, just making them more bold and a lot more fun to look at. And last time we had somebody ask, like, what if you want to make just the tattoos colored? And there's actually a cool way to do that. And you can do the selective colorization right here. Just slide that up, and you can add color back into the image, which is nice. Like, if you want, you know, if you have a shot with a rose that's red and you just want to add color to the red rose, uh, you can do something like that. But for this shot, we're just going to keep it all black and white. And then, oop, don't want that there. Perfect. All right, and I actually forgot the bottom of his jean coat, so I'm going to quick add some structure there as well to make it match the top half. Perfect. All right, next step, his hair. We can add some structure to this as well, make it a little more defined. Uh, his jawline area. Um, so this line right here that defines his jaw, we can make that a little bit more defined as well. 
bring some structure in there. You see how it just made that line of hair just a little bit blacker. And uh, now that'll just separate his head a little bit more. And just give, uh, give a foot a little more of a kick. Lips. Let's go in and do his eyes as well. I'm just clicking, um, changing my circle size. Actually, I should do that more on these ones because they're a little bit big. Sometimes I get a little carried away myself. Perfect. Adjusting these eyes. Good. All right, and I'm not doing any contrast in these sliders because I'm actually going to go in and just throw a global contrast on this whole thing now. Uh, I've got some nice bold tattoos. I got a nice jean jacket. Uh, his hair, you can see the streaks in a little bit more. His eyes are more defined. His jawline is more defined. And uh, just overall, the image pops a little bit more. And actually, you can see right here is a little bit too bright. If you do this is the before, and this is the after. And you can see right under his neck, it's almost like dusty looking, I guess you would say. So I'm going to bring the brightness back down on that. And let's see now. Click on the image. Click on the image. There we go. And that's the before, and here's the after. And that looks a little bit better to me. So now I'm going to go ahead and add some contrast to the whole image. There we go. And just throwing that overall contrast and it just really makes, you know, pulls the image together. So what was once flat that we started off with uh, is now nice and uh, well-rounded with once we add this contrast in. And cool. Alright, what else do I like to want to do to this? Uh, some other things I might want to do. Um, if I want to make his arms pop even more, I can actually grab this and use the Amplify Whites to uh, just bring those out a little bit more. You can see it's just making them pop. Uh, it's taking the whites and amplifying them, so exactly what it sounds like. And it just says AW down here, but if you select it, it'll tell you Amplify Whites. I think I'm going to do that for his vest as well. Amplify Whites a little bit. Perfect. And. All right, what else do I like to do this thing? I think that might be it for this image. Um, I'll usually go ahead and just do some more before and afters just to make sure everything looks good. And then, yeah, I like this image, black and white, uh, dramatic portrait. But you can see with, I mean, that didn't take us more than 15 minutes uh, and a few control points. And we went from this to this. A nice, uh, very, has a lot of pop to it, so yeah. Awesome. All right, next we're going to do, um, how far into this are we? Uh, you got 20 minutes or so. All right, cool. So we'll do one more image here. And what I'm going to do now is a color portrait. And start off in raw. And throw a few adjustments in here. And because I know I'm going to be using this in color eventually, I'm going to do a few little quick adjustments in here just to get the right tone. And then again, getting rid of that sharpening and getting rid of some of those blacks and just making sure everything's properly exposed. This is a natural light image uh, shot of a guy named Tyson. And uh, the thing I like about this is that with silver effects, I can make this almost look like it was shot with lighting because I'll make it pop so much. So I'm going to go edit the heck out of this thing. And. Uh, all right, here we go. So pretty much the same thing as what you saw before, just a different image to apply it to. And uh, this guy's face, I'm probably going to keep a little bit softer because uh, I want him to look nice. But at the same time, I'm going to make his eyes be a little bit more defined, his hair, uh, his his hair on his face as well, and his lips. So uh, you know, just try to get a general idea of what I'm going for before I go into uh, edit the shot. And with this particular one, I didn't open it as a smart object because I'm actually going to be, um, correct me if I'm wrong here, Dan, but do I need to duplicate the layer or just go and filter and it'll make a new layer? It'll just make a new layer. Okay, so in Photoshop, usually I duplicate the layer and work on a new one, but here I just go filter and Silver Effects Pro, and what it's going to do is make this adjustment on the next layer. 
So let's see here. For this one, I'm going to start off uh, just increasing the contrast a little bit uh, globally. Let's get a little more contrast in the sky. And then I'm going to start adding control points and just going crazy with some structure. So one on his face, for his facial hair, one on his lips, for his lips, and then one on his eyes, or two on his eyes rather. Four. Good. And I don't want to make this too much more intense, so I'm going to place another control point right here just to get rid of that adjustment so that it doesn't actually affect. Uh, the bags under his eyes. You know, uh, everybody has bags, but they're not always the most attractive thing. So we're going to try to leave those out. And then his hair, bring the structure up on that. His ear, structure up on that. And then his back area, make that bigger. More structure. And kill it right here because we don't want to see much of this. We'll actually make this brighter just to um, help flood it back here so it's not a... There we go. Perfect. And I think down here he wants him as well. And again, I'm just thinking as I go what would look cool and what uh, what I want to do this image. There's no right or wrong, just as long as it works. Uh, that's what's important. And I was doing these little checks, so before, after, and that probably took a minute. And we're already well into this editing process. But that's the before, so you know, nice flat image to start with. And then we go in and add all of our contrast selectively. I'm just going to throw some overall structure on here just to sharpen the whole thing up. And then fine structure. Um, fine structure works on the fine points or edges of the image. And then, what? Good. Yeah, and then uh, the regular structure works more on, well, the stuff you can see. So you can see how if you turn all the way up, it would do everything but we don't want it that intense. And then I'm going to go in and add, oh, actually just edit this control point right here. I want his lips to be a little bit more structured. And then around here as well, more structure. And awesome. So this image is in black and white right now, but we're going to throw it into color once we get into Photoshop here. So I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. So that looks pretty good to me. And super simple trick, um, once you open, and this works for any image as long as you start out in color, uh, all you have to do is change your blend mode to luminosity here. And the hotkey for that is Shift Option Y, I believe. Shift, uh, I don't know what it is. This Could be different on my computer as well. Yeah, all right, I'm not at my home base. But uh, yeah, so just click right here, press luminosity. And then you can see the before and after. It's just something, I mean, it's a huge change, but uh, we're not even in a black and white image. And I think it looks awesome. And, oh, I know why I wasn't the right tool. But if there's anything that's uh, too affected, you can always go in and mask it out. Um, you can also do it in silver effects, but I didn't make this a, uh, a smart object, so I can't go back and do it again. So I just add, you know, a quick layer mask and just. I think on his nose it's just a little bit too much, so I'm just going to clean it up real fast. And just do something like that. Perfect. And I could spend more time on this as well. Uh, if I were to edit this image for my website, I would probably spend more close to an hour or so editing it. But um, this at least gives you an idea of how you can edit it and get that awesome look up pretty quickly, actually. And. Yeah. Looks good. Can yeah. Another one? Um, yeah, I can do another one. All right, so that should do that. And I can do another color portrait. And let's do actually a studio lit color portrait. So this one, yeah, let's do this one. This one actually has all, let's wait for both. OK, so this actually has all my editing steps on it. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those. And this is the original image. So. Um, this is straight from camera, except for the contrast was killed to negative 25% uh, on this one in the raw editor. So uh, I don't have the raw file with me, but that's what I did there. And then I opened it up in Photoshop. And I'm uh, going to go ahead and take it into Silver Effects Pro 2. And yeah, this was lit with a softbox uh, 
basically, I was right up in this guy's face. Um, like, if he would have nodded his head, he would have hit my camera pretty much. And then the back of my head was touching an octobox that was aimed right at his head. And you can see the catch light in his eyes, how close it was. And having the box so close gives that really nice kind of soft uh, light that just wraps around his face beautifully. And then in the back, you can see this is an umbrella. And that was almost just to give me like a studio backdrop because this portrait was done in about a minute. Um, I shot about 20 of these uh, just real quick on work Tour, set up backstage and took some photos. So um, yeah, this is one of the shots. And what my main goal is to do with this is the same thing I did with the other image, just make it pop more because right now it's a very flat image. And because it's so evenly lit, I actually don't need to use control points as much as I did in the other shots. So I'm going to start off with some overall contrast. Perfect. Uh, some structure. I'll just slide it till it looks nice. If I could grab it, there we go. And then if I want to do the structure in highlights, midtones, or shadows, I can also do that around here. So this will add it to more of the dark areas, which are pretty much just right here. So I think midtones will do me justice. There we go. And what that's going to do is going to sharpen, you know, uh, his skin right here, but it might fade away as it gets to these brighter areas here that I don't necessarily need as sharp because that's more of his skin um, and it doesn't always need to be super sharp. And now I'm going to go in and add control points to areas that I want to sharpen even more than the rest. Oh, that is way too much. Bring that down a little bit. I'm just going to bring it around on his beard. All over. And his eyes. Perfect. So yeah, I'm just clicking, adding points again, um, playing around with the slider, and just adding structure to areas that I want to be more structured and more focused. So your eye always goes to the brightest spot in the image first, so it would probably go right about here. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're adding an image. You know, you don't want his shirt sleeve to be the brightest, the brightest thing in the whole shot. Um, just know where other people are going to look uh, right away structure of his hair and you can see how flat flat his hair looks without this um, basically it's all a palette that we can just pull the contrast up a ton and uh, yeah just make it pop and I always shoot for my editing so I just know how I'm gonna edit these image afterwards so uh, I always try to make the light nice and uh, have a lot of room to play with it you know it's not too dark not too light just something in between so I can, you know, push it up or pull it down um, depending on what I want, how I want the image to look in the end. There we go. Some structure. And the background on this isn't that important because it's just white, so I actually don't need to add control points back there. In Photoshop, I would probably go in, probably do in here actually, and just amplify these whites to make it brighter. There we go, let's do that. Let's get rid of the background. I'm just going to duplicate that, duplicate that, duplicate that, duplicate that. There we go. And just make it less, a little less obvious that this background is an umbrella. I'm going to group these points together. Perfect. Go down here, group them together. And then grab this commanding point, just brighten it all up. There we go. You can see it made this area a little bit too bright, so I'm going to go in and add some control points down here. And just, whoops. Perfect. Just to control his body so it's not overexposed and such. Except I still want it brighter right there. There we go. There, now he's on the white background. That was easy enough. And then his, I don't want his eyebrows to have any more contrast. I think that looks good. And yeah, that should do it. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK here. And same thing as last time. I'm going to change the blend mode to luminosity layer. And that's going to let all of these details drop through to the layer below. And make it look awesome. And the coloring is a little bit off, and that's totally OK. I'll just have to go in with color balance layer or something like that and switch it up a little bit. Or I can, yeah. 
but at least it gave me that kind of effect where everything's popping, everything's coming out of, of the screen, and yeah, it's got that nice 3D look to it. Cool. Sounds good. Cool. <laughs> do you want to get into some questions? Yeah, let's do some of these questions here. So if you have any questions, just type them into your box. That's going to do it for the seminar right there. Um, but uh, I'm just going to go through and start answering these in chronological order. Okay, so question is, do you make the decision for the Porsche to be black and white before the shoot or after? So, sometimes I guess I have in mind whether I will know if it'll be black and white before or after. Like if I'm shooting for a magazine, then maybe I'll know because it's my assignment. But a lot of the times, I'll just wait until I get into Photoshop and just honestly see what looks best. So, you know, if it's really dramatic lighting and stuff, usually it looks better black and white like that shot of the guys of the guy with all the tattoos. But if it's nice and well-rounded light like this, um, it might look better with, you know, with in a color shot. And then you can see his eyes and things like that. Um, yeah, and if I don't answer your question wholly, just ask another one to have me reiterate. Trash? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Jason, when you were asking about the global adjustment, where, when were you, what were you asking about? Can you be more specific? I think you had gotten into control points a lot more. Okay. And then went back into the global adjustments afterwards. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I was using control points to, just because I wanted more control of the adjust, where the adjustments were going, and, uh, I almost used the global as more as like a finishing touch, I would say, um, and not as something I rely on all the time. So my go-to tool is definitely control points. And then with shots more like this, I'm going to use the global adjustments. Is that correct? If Jason, it's, your, it's your thought process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I mean, like, I didn't know if I answered that correctly. Oh, yeah, I think but you But Jason, if, yeah. you, if you need more information, just ask again. So is there a recovery slider in the software? And if so, would that make it look better? There isn't something called recovery, but you can you get the same effect just by throwing the brightness slider or the amplify white slider the other direction. And there there is actually a slider that's a it's a shadow or highlight protection slider. So let's say we just start with a preset really quickly, just so there's something done to the image. Let's say something like uh, how about this one, lots of grain. And if we added too much contrast, not to interject, but just so you see it, uh, your tonality protection slider here. If you take that highlight slider up into the right, it's a recovery slider, basically. What it does is it takes the brightest highlights and it darkens it back down. So that way you don't blow out your highlights, so you don't run the risk of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, Dan knows his software like crazy, so I'm learning too. And, all right. Yeah. All right. Just a sec, I've got to read these questions. Black and whites for dark-skinned folks. What's your approach? Um, well, personally, I like photographing people with darker skin more. Um, for black and whites, I feel like there's so much more you can do with it because you can really pull that skin so much brighter than you can with somebody who's white like this. Um, you can only make his skin so dark before it looks unbelievable. But with somebody who's black, you can you know make it all the way white or all the way dark, and really it's just more contrast in their skin. It's not making it unbelievable. So... My approach with black and whites of people with darker skin, I actually get stoked <laughs> because it's it's more of a more of a playground. Like you can really uh, play around with that more and make more dramatic images. I think that answers your question. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the question is, how long does it take to normally work on one photo for you? And uh, it differs anywhere from five minutes, maybe if it's a live image of a band uh, that doesn't need a lot of editing, or anywhere to an hour or four hours, depending if it's a press shot, it'll take a long time because there's lots of people in it. Or if it's a portrait, it might take an hour because there's only one person in it. So uh, it's all range, a whole range of things, but on average, probably around a, an hour, I would say. Yeah, if you want to add control points to the group, you just um, select the group control points, your new control point, and press group, and it'll just group them all together. And yeah, then you can add them to your group. 
the question was, sorry, if you can add more control points to control points you already have grouped together. Uh, the question is, what method do you use to keep track of all the control points you use? Is that what E points are? Mm -hmm. Can you name them? No, you can't name them, but you have them in a, They're numbered. They're numbered. But how do you keep track of them? Um, I don't keep track of them. I click on them, mm -hmm. and then I look at which one's selected. So you can see the selected one's yellow on the right. So then if you place another one, it will be turns gray, and then you know which one it is by selecting it. So you almost don't need to keep track of it on the right because you can just click to it on the, on the actual uh, photo itself. So I took the sharpening out of the images, and the question is, when do I sharpen? And the sharpening actually comes into play when you use the structure. Uh, that's what that is, is it's sharpening of the image. And the fine structure is more of the fine sharpening. So that's when it comes back in. And if I needed additional sharpening after using the program, I'd go into Photoshop and use Unsharp Mask or another technique to sharpen the image. Uh, the question again was, how do you choose between a black and white and color picture? Basically, just, you know, whatever looks cool. <laughs> just, just, whatever looks good to your eye, go with it. Okay, I'll take this one. So, when using a control point, uh, the radius of the control point, the size of the circle, actually sort of communicates with the software as to how big the selection would be. So, if we wanted to affect the iris of his eye here, I wouldn't want to make a huge control point because his iris is only this big. But if you go in and look at your area of influence, or the, I'm sorry, the selection that the control point's making, so if you move over to the right-hand side of the interface and we turn that little toggle box on, you can see the selection that's being made. And again, what the control point wants to do is look for that object or similar tones and colors and textures. If we size that down to be really small, it's just going to select out his iris. If we make it really big, it goes and looks for other tones and colors that are similar. So we're going to want to, if we just want to adjust his iris anyways, make that uh, area of influence, make the circle a lot smaller. Uh, Joe, Joe's question is, is it possible to name the control points? Uh, Joe, it's not possible to name the control points, but you shouldn't really need to because it's sort of a visual thing. You know, uh, would you, so what we'd be interested in doing maybe is saying, okay, this is the iris control point. But rather than naming it over here, iris control point, you just go over to your control point and click on it, and that's going to show you any of the control points that are currently active. It's highlighted in yellow. So if we had two control points on the irises, and we wanted to see which ones they were within the list, you just highlight both of them by clicking anywhere that's not on a control point and drag. That's going to activate both of them, and then in your control point list, you can see they're active there. So there shouldn't be too much of a need for uh, naming the control points, just because it's kind of like a visual thing right there on your image. No problem, Joe. All right. Do you guys have any more questions before we hit the road here? I greatly appreciate you guys coming out to the demonstration. I want to make sure that you do have Adam's... Uh, Adam's web address. Adam, do you want to type in your web address here? And we do have a question that just came in, and maybe we can speak to that as well. Uh, but Adam, go ahead and type that in. Definitely check out his work. We just sent, or Adam sent it to you. It's in your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, and John, let's see if we can speak to that one. So if you take the sharpening down to zero when you start, it looks like your structure is at it. So, John, good question. Now, the sharpening that he's removing in his Adobe Camera Raw is, is a raw pre-sharpener. And what it can do, especially if you're going to add in structure, like what Adam's doing here, what that raw pre-sharpening can do is inter introduce artifacting. So Adam's noticed that, so he removes the, uh, the raw pre-sharpening, and then within the structure tool, he's able to get the texture back that the raw pre-sharpening would have been giving him in the first place. It is a little bit different, the raw pre-sharpener algorithm compared to structure, but he's able to get the image, you know, more than tack sharp, I would say. If we zoom in here, zoom into 100%, you know, he's removed the, the raw pre-sharpening, but if you look at that, he's got tons of detail in there. 
and he's not introducing the artifacting that the raw pre-sharpener could do. You can even see his nose hairs. Yeah. <laughs> Which we might want to clone out. Maybe not. Maybe not with this image, right? Yeah, <laughs> right. And then I can show the eyes. Like. Sure. So yeah, if you want to add color in the eyes, you can just go right here. Selective colorization and do it like that. Uh, or you can mask it out once you get into Photoshop. But uh, yeah, I would say the easiest way would be to just mask it out once you get into Photoshop. Or just paint the color in, too. Uh, it's really whatever. And, uh, and what happens here, just to sort of finish up with the control point and adding the color back in, is it's going to add the color that was inherent within the original image. So it's not like creating its own color or anything like that. This was the color of his eye in the original photo. And that's, that's how it's getting that color. Uh, will there be any way to see the recording of the webinar? Uh, I jumped in a little late. Yeah, Josh, the webinar is being recorded. What's up, Josh? <laughs> and so you'll be able to, uh, <laughs> and so you'll be able to watch that later on. Uh, I think you're going to be able to definitely find it at Adam's site. I'm going to try and get it up at the Nick Software uh, digital or the webinar archive as well. But Adam will probably have it up before I do. Yeah, I'll post it on my blog. Moment, I'll post it soon. Um. <laughs> Thanks, John. All right. Good team. Do we have any more questions? <laughs> we just high five because yeah, you can yeah. hear it. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. And uh, yeah, I should be doing uh, one more in the next month or two. I'll probably be doing it while I'm on the road. So I'll be doing it from a back of a tour bus or something. But uh, yeah, stop back for that one if you uh, can. We'll get new images and new stuff. And Hopefully learn some new things. And, and you'll be able to hear about that webinar, uh, both through Nick Software. We'll make sure that that's in an email that goes out to anybody that receives emails from Nick Software. 